Hello guys, in this video I will implement something called as Twitter bot classification using some set of features. I have already downloaded the data set. I will provide the data set also in the video description. Uh, this project, this can be used as a mini project or hobby project in your academics. So please watch it till the end and we will follow the steps that I have outlined in my another video where I have explained steps to follow in any machine learning or data science project. Okay. So let's get started. So initially, I will first import uh, three uh, required libraries, uh, that is NumPy, Pandas, and Cbond, just for basic visualizations. Okay. So I'll import those three libraries. I will read the data set and I will check how the data set looks like. Okay. So if I check the shape of the data set, we have around thirty-seven thousand four thirty-eight records and twenty columns. So this is our data. This is how it looks like. So, in any ML or data science project, the first step is always to understand the task and the data set at hand very clearly. So, here the task is to predict whether the Twitter account provided these features, whether it's a bot account or a human account. Okay. And the target variable in this data set is account type. Okay, so this is our column. We have to predict whether this particular account provided this set of features is a bot or a non-bot or human. Okay, so this is what we have to predict. So in this case, I always uh, start by checking the null values uh, and express them in terms of percentage. Okay, so let's first check that. So I'll just give the heading. So I'll say missing values count expressed in terms of percentage. Okay, so how we can do that? So we have this particular data set that we have with us, right? Uh, in the variable Twitter DF. So Twitter DF dot is null dot sum, and I will. I need to express it as percentage, right? So I will divide the sum by total number of records that we have in the data frame. So how I can do that? It will be Twitter df dot shape of zero. So total number of records, and I'll multiply everything with hundred, so that I will have the numbers expressed in terms of percentage. So if you see here, we have missing values only for select few columns. So profile image URL. So it has 0.002% of missing values. Profile background image URL, 12% data is missing. Location, 0.008% of the data is missing. Language, LANG, it has 21.25% of the data is missing from that particular column. And finally, the description column has 19.38% of the missing records. Okay. So this is just an idea uh, to get an idea if we have more missing records or missing values or we do not have any missing values. So this is how you can check with respect to percentage. Okay. So once we check this, we can try to understand the columns in detail. Okay. So if we just look at this particular top five records, we have a column called as unnamed zero. Uh, this just looks like count so we will just drop it out okay so how we can drop it out so we'll say twitter df dot drop i'll just give that column name here unnamed zero and i have to drop the column right so access will be is equal to one and i want it to be in place so what is this in place equal to true this will have the effect on this original data frame that we have okay so if I execute it and then check my Twitter DF dot head, I will not have that particular column unnamed zero anymore. Okay. So now let us see how many bot and how many human accounts we have in the data set. Okay. So if we want to check the count, it's simple. Uh, we can say Twitter DF of the column name is account type right so i'll just give that column name account type dot value counts 
so we have 12425 bot accounts and 25013 human accounts okay so if we express this in percentage i think we will get around 65 and 35 percent okay so let's see that so how we can express that in percentage it's the same thing so we can use value counts divided by twitter df dot shape of zero and we can multiply the entire number by 100 so yes so as expected uh, there are 66 percent human accounts and 33 percent bot accounts so we can clearly say that the task at hand is classification that is binary we have two classes to predict either human or bot and the data that we have is imbalanced right we have more human accounts than bot accounts so you can get a base estimation just by looking at this so when i say base estimation if you look at any ml algorithms or even if you do not want to use any ml algorithms so whichever account you get if you just predict it as human account you will be right 66 percent of the times so your accuracy will be around 66 percent so we can establish that the baseline that we have is 66 percent and whatever ml model that we train should give the accuracy more than 66 percent right then our task would be successful okay so i'll just write that so the task at hand is binary classification and data is imbalanced right also if we just predict every account as human account we would be right 66 percent of times right so our baseline accuracy will be 66 percent so whatever ml models that we train right we should get the accuracy more than 66 percent okay so we have established one general idea or task that we want to achieve that's our target right so we have to achieve the target of accuracy more than the baseline prediction that is 66 percent okay so this is what your initial analysis should be in case of classification task right so since this account type is of categorical type human or bot we will convert this into number so let's say we will map bot to number one and replace human with number zero so there are multiple ways to do that but i would like to use map method okay you can also use replace but here in this case i'm using map so what i'll say twitter df of account type is equal to twitter df of account type dot map so what i want to map it should be passed in a dictionary okay so i want to map bot to the value one and human to the value zero okay so now if i check my twitter df the top five records or how many records you want to check the account type is converted into numerical form so all bot accounts are converted to have the values one and human accounts are converted to have the values zero okay so this is the basic task that we have to do as a first step now if you look at the columns each of every column may or may not be useful right so we have to identify the important columns we have to keep the important columns and we have to let go some of the non important columns or the not required columns so if you want to think it in a funny way we will have to play a big boss show here right so we can treat each feature as the contestant and we have to try to eliminate the contestant based on some criteria right so let's play big boss so how we can do that the first simple step would be to check the correlation right so if i say twitter df dot corr so this will give me the pearson correlation 
between among all the features and only those features which are numerical in nature so the categorical or object nature features will not be considered in order to evaluate the correlation okay so we'll have to deal that in a different way so now if you see we have to check the correlation of these accounts with respect to account type right so default profile has a correlation of 0.29 with account type default profile image has 0.09 so if you look at the similar correlations you can see followers count has very less 0.08 friends count has 0.06 correlation coefficient and similarly status count very status count is also having very less correlation average tweets per day is also having very less correlation okay so these all columns you can eliminate in a first step so in the first round of elimination in a big boss show we will be able to eliminate few of the columns that we have in our data set that are not required okay so those are the things we will make note of it and then deal them in the future steps okay so there is a column called as id so this is just the account id we can blindly remove this okay so this will not have any impact on our prediction right so we'll just remove this column right away so twitter df dot drop what i have to drop i have to i have to use the same uh, syntax as i used here right so i'll drop id column so it's id access is one and i want it to be in place and set it to true so now if i check twitter df dot let's just check top two records guys let's not display all the five records so we do not have id column now okay so this is done now we have some boolean columns right so you can see default profile is boolean default profile image is boolean and geo enabled is boolean do we have any other booleans yes we have verified also boolean right so before that we have another column called as created at so this is clearly this looks like the account creation date and time right so we will revisit this column at some later stage right so i'll just note it down so created at is a column which gives information on when and at what time the account was created okay so we will revisit to this particular column at later stage we will keep this we will park this aside okay now default profile default profile image these are boolean columns let's check how many true how many false and also we will check geo enabled and other boolean column that we have okay so let's see so it's twitter df so the first is default profile right so i'll say value counts so we have 15720 default profiles and 21718 accounts which are set default profile as false okay so similarly we can check this for remaining boolean columns default profile image okay and then geo enabled as well so let me just copy this so i'll tell you why i am checking all these things in a while okay so geo enabled and then we have another boolean column right so we have total four boolean columns one two three and four verified so whether the account is verified or not okay so let's check let's separately check the correlation of these boolean columns with the target column that is account type so that we'll have a clear picture we don't have to scroll right and left top and bottom again and again okay 
so what i'll do i'll say twitter df of i will copy these values so default profile comma default profile image then i'll check for geo enabled and then i'll check for verified column as well and i want to check this with account type which is our target variable right and just type that account type i want to check the correlation among these columns so if you check you can safely drop default profile image because it has least correlation with the account type so we can drop this uh, i do not see any other columns that has weak correlation with the account type so we will not remove any other column as of now okay so i'll just write it i'll give a statement so that you will understand when you refer this notebook so the column that we are removing or in terms of big boss we are removing this particular contestant from our house okay so default profile image has least or no correlation with account type so we will remove this particular column from our data set okay so how we can remove that twitter df dot drop so what's the column name default profile image right so default profile image comma access is equal to one i want it to be in place in place is equal to true now if i check my data let's check top two records it is this one right so now we have three more boolean columns default profile geo enabled and verified so they seem to have little correlation with account type so we will see if we can come to any conclusion with respect to each of these boolean types when we compare them with account type target variable okay so what we'll do we'll do the basic analysis on the count by having the count plot okay so i'll say sns dot count plot so what i want i want to have twitter df of account type with respect to each of the boolean columns so h u e is the parameter i'll say twitter df of i'll pass in default profile feature right so if i execute it so there is some warning we'll ignore that for now maybe we need to use other ways to call this count plot okay so can we conclude something so zero represents human account one represents bot account so true false default profile true default profile false so most of the human accounts have default profile set to false and we cannot say the similar thing with the bot accounts for default account default profile set to true right so we cannot state it clearly but somehow they are related with 0.29 as a correlation coefficient okay so we'll see we'll do the similar analysis on other boolean variables okay so the next boolean column that we have is so it is geo enabled right so let's check for geo enabled so instead of default profile it will be geo enabled so it also doesn't give any striking uh, striking correlation or what i want to say is we cannot conclude anything concretely based on the account type whether it's a bot or human account so bot and human account doesn't necessarily follow some criteria in order to distinguish them from bot or account uh, human accounts okay so that's about geo enabled and the next boolean value we have is verified right so let's check the similar count plot with verified 
attribute so okay most of the human accounts are verified but we cannot generalize it well because there are certain accounts for bot as well which are verified which are not verified right so let's see there are certain accounts certain bot accounts which are verified but most of them are not verified or uh, it's the same case with respect to human accounts as well most of the accounts are not verified only if you are verified right so we cannot clearly see any striking correlation between them right so that's okay uh, we'll we'll deal with it in some other way okay so now let's let us see some other columns so what else we have okay this screen name screen name more or less i think it's a user name okay so let's see that so this should be unique if it's if at all it's a user name so twitter df of screen name dot n unique so sorry it's a method okay so we have 37438 unique screen names so my assumption is right it's nothing but the username so usernames will be unique right so we will remove this screen name column straight away we will eliminate this contestant from our feature data set so what we can do twitter df dot drop screen name access is equal to 1 because i want to drop that particular column and i want it to be in in place so i'll set in place equal to true okay so now we have removed this particular column as well okay so this is the data that we have with us right now okay so let's check the column description now okay so if we description it's a text right so if you can just look at this blame at x ai x inspired by making invisible or something right so it's a natural text you if you want to employ natural language processing techniques you can well do that okay so first let's create a bag of words for this particular column okay so i'll just give it a heading i will say let's check description column in detail so what i'll do i will create two bag of words separately for bot accounts and human accounts let's see so i'll say bot bow is equal to twitter df dot block so i want to specify the filters first right so let's specify the filters so how i can specify the filters i'll say bot filter which will give us the bot accounts okay so i'll say twitter df of account type is equal to 1 so this is my filter for bot accounts and similarly i will create the filter for human accounts okay human filter and it will be zero now i'll say twitter df dot block of bot filt that is bot filter and what i'll say i'll convert it to string i'll strip by default at the white space and then i'll have the values so this will give me a numpy array bot bow will be a numpy array okay so similarly i will construct the bag of words for human accounts i'll name it as human bow so instead of bot filter i need to use human filter right so i'll say twitter df dot block human filter dot str dot strip dot values so what happened data frame object has no attribute str uh okay so i have to apply it for the column description right so sorry for that my bad my mistake so it's for description 
because we are checking description right so of course it's a silly mistake it happens guys so no worries so now if i check it okay so now if we check the length of bot bow and length of human bag of words of course uh, it will have repeated values so what we'll do we will get the unique words number of unique words how we can quickly convert it to set convert the numpy array to set and then check the length that's it right so if you check the number of unique words okay so there are 7996 unique words uh, in bot bag of words and similarly with human bag of words we have 21985 unique words so now one thing we can do uh, we can try to see if there are any particular set of words which are specifically used only with bot accounts right and we can also check if there are any specific set of words that are used with human accounts or we can do one more thing we can also check which are the common words that are used by both human and bot accounts okay so that would be interesting and it will give us the better idea as to proceed how to proceed further okay so we'll see so how we, what i want to check i want to check the common words used between bot accounts and human accounts okay so for that what i will do i will say set of bot bow i will just say intersection with set of human back of words okay so if i just check it and if you want to check the number of words so i'll just have to use length method right so length of this particular operation so there are only 35 common words which are used by both bot accounts and human accounts rest all are different so this feature would be useful in model training okay so which is this feature this is description description would be a useful feature in model training okay so this is what we can conclude based on the simple analysis that we have okay so now we have we are done with checking the description we have some boolean features right so we'll convert them into numbers right let's convert true to one and false to zero okay so what i'll do i'll say twitter df of default profile so this is one of the boolean feature right so what i'll say i will convert this to number so dot map i will map true to one and false to zero okay so the same thing i will do for remaining two boolean columns so the next is geo enabled and the last one is verified so i'll just copy this okay so i'll just execute it now if i check twitter df dot add so i have converted the boolean into numerical columns okay so now what else we can do we'll have to play big boss again right so we'll try to eliminate some of the columns so what is this uh, let's see profile image url and profile background image url so these are just the urls uh, i don't think uh, just by a general thinking we can say that the profile background image url and profile image url will not be able to contribute in any way to predict the account type whether it's human or bot account right so let's just drop those two columns right so twitter df dot drop so i'll pass 
more than one column so i'll have to specify them in a list right so i'll just copy those column names profile background image url and profile image url right so i'll just copy that as well and i want to drop these two columns so access will be one and i want them in in place i want to have the changes affected in the original data frame so now if i check my data frame so it looks like this so those two columns are dealt with okay so now we have uh we'll have to deal with created column right so i told you uh, this is the date and time of the account creation so let's see uh, what we can do so it doesn't matter how many uniques we have uh, so what we can do uh, we'll first see the data type of this particular column so in order to check that what we can do we'll say twitter df dot info so this will give us the column name and the data type for each of the column so created at is a column of type object so what we'll do we will convert this to pandas date time data type okay so how we can do that we can do that in a simple step twitter df of created at is equal to pd dot to date time and which column we want to convert twitter df of created at okay so now if we check twitter df dot info it will be converted into date time type okay so why we converted so this created at will have multiple dates and multiple times but let's see uh, if there is any correlation or yeah if there is any correlation with the time when the account was created uh, specifically at which hour the account was created if that helps us in identifying whether that account is boss or human account right so let's what we'll do we will separate out only our part from this date time column okay so how we can do that it's also simple it's twitter df uh, let's say i want to replace this column the, the entire column with only the hour at which it was created so i do not want year date month and remaining minutes and seconds i just want to have this 2105 which is the hour component from this particular column value okay so what i'll say i'll say twitter df of created at i want to replace these values with only the hour value right so it will be twitter df of created at so i can access dt attribute now because it's a date time type and str f time string uh, string format time specified in a string format so i'll say percentage h i want to take the hour component and let's say i want to take it as type int okay so i'll say as type int so now if i check twitter df dot head and check the two first two rows okay so i have separated out i have only obtained the our component from the particular column created at okay so now what we will do we will convert this into created at uh, let's say we will convert this into uh, maybe around six categories okay so what will be those late night early morning morning noon evening and night so this is just an assumption right so we need some way to deal with created at right so let's convert this numerical column into categorical column okay so how we will do that we will use the formula so i'll just copy it i have it here i'll just copy it so I will introduce a new column called as period. I will create it out of created at column and I will divide it by 24. Whatever remainder I get, I'll add 4 and then have the absolute division with 4. Okay. So now I will uh, 
I will not go into detail about this computation right now. Okay. Maybe you can just Google it. You will get an idea why I did it this way. Okay. So now what I will do, uh, if I just check Twitter DF dot head of let's say first three records. So if I check created at and period, so 6, 2, 2, right. So here what I am doing, I am dividing the 24 hours in a day into six different time zones, right. So let me just write that. So it will be easy for you guys. Dividing a day into six different time categories namely uh, let's say late night early morning morning noon evening and night okay so now what we have to do we, we will get these particular numbers right six two two etc so if you check it it will have only six unique values. So let me just show that to you. So Twitter DF of period dot n unique. So it has six unique values. So Twitter DF of period dot value counts. Okay. So these are the values that we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So this is how it is. So the number with 1 will give us the late night. The number with 2 will be early morning. The number 3 will be morning. 4 will be noon. 5 will be evening. And 6 will be night. Okay. So this is what these numbers represent. So if you just divide this. So, 21 is 9 o'clock, right? So, 9 o'clock is converted into 6. So, and as I told you, 6 will be night, will be understood as night. So, 21, which is 9 o'clock, 9 p.m., it's correct, right? It's a night time. So, similarly, uh, whatever time that we get, that is 5, right? So, 5 a.m., okay? So, 5 a.m., it gets 2 value is 2 so what is 2 we can treat it as early morning right so what we will do we will replace these numbers with this particular late night early morning value so that we will have some understanding okay so what i will do i will say twitter df of period so we have used map till now so let's use replace method so that you will get an idea how to use replace as well okay so replace i will have the dictionary supplied so one will be replaced with late night okay so two will be replaced with early morning three this um, okay three will be replaced with morning four will be replaced with noon five let's call it as evening and six let's call it as night okay so i want this to be in place i want it to be replaced in place okay so i'll say in place is equal to so now if i check my twitter df dot add uh, let's say first three records so if you look at the period column we have successfully mapped the numbers to the required values okay so now let us check if these particular things night or uh, early morning late night evening has any effect on predicting the account type as human or bot accounts okay so what we can do we can first let's have the visualization just for the fancy stuff i'll say sns dot count plot 
Twitter DF of account type and HUE who will be Twitter DF of period. So if I just check it, so you will see a fancy count plot with the account types subcategorized with the period when the accounts were created. Okay, so you can see that. It's just a count, right? So we cannot clearly say anything. Uh, okay, so most of the bot accounts are created late night or early morning, something like that. We cannot clearly say that. Okay, so what we'll do, we will check the counts. Uh, we will not have the exact counts. Uh, we will not get to know the exact counts here. So what we'll do, we will get the counts. So I'll say Twitter DF dot. I'll say group by. I'll group by period. I'll check account type value counts. Value counts. Okay. So now we have the exact counts that we wanted to look at. Okay. So I do not see any such relationship between account type and the time when the account was created. So what we can do, we can drop this particular column. Uh, period and also created that. So we did all these analysis. We introduced the new candidate. You can call it as a wild card entry in the Big Boss House, only to eliminate it later. Okay. So if you want to have double check, uh, you can check the counts and then try to link it with the account type, whether it is giving any information or not. Just by looking at it, we can say that it's not having any striking contribution in deciding whether the account type is bot or human. Okay, so we will simply remove this. So Twitter df dot drop. We will remove both of this period and created at columns. So I want to remove columns. Access is equal to one, and I want it to be in place is equal to true. Okay, so that's it. Twitter df dot head. So we are have we are done away with most of the columns, right? So, but still we have certain columns which we have to work with. So let's see how first check with numerical columns only, right? So favorite counts for bot and human accounts. Let's check that. Right. So what I'll say, I'll say, uh, let me group by uh, account type first. So grouped Twitter DF is equal to Twitter DF dot group by account type. I want to group by account. Type. Okay. So this will have two groups. One with value zero, one with value one. So zero are the is the group of all the human accounts. One is the group of all the bot accounts. Okay. So I can say now if we want to check all the human accounts and its relationship with the average count, how we can do that? So it's grouped Twitter DF dot. I want to get group zero. I want to get the zeroth group that is human accounts, right? So dot describe. So describe is the method which will give us the five number summary and basic statistics within the data set that we have. Okay. So similarly, we can get the bot accounts group and then check this stats here. So I'll say one and then this will give me the stats for non-human or bot accounts. Okay. So comparing these two statistics. We can say that, uh, let's see, before saying we'll have to look at the data, right? So we haven't looked at it. So let's see standard deviation for any specific column, okay? So let's check it for average tweets per day. So average tweet, tweets per day, the standard deviation for human account is 14. and Average tweets per day, the standard deviation for bot accounts is 37. 
okay so standard deviation is large for bot accounts than human accounts with respect to average tweets per day right and what else we can check we can check favorites count and followers count in some way so favorites count for human accounts it's 25000 and for bot accounts it's 12425 it's almost half of the favorites count with respect to human accounts with respect for bot accounts right so human accounts favorite count is 25000 but the bot account favorite count is 12000 so around halfway of that mark and followers count also so human accounts seem to have more number of followers when compared to bot accounts right so this is just a general a general conclusion that we can come at okay so what else we can do can we do something out of this no right but this looks like a useful feature uh, which will decide further by checking the correlation once again before we actually train the model okay but before proceeding further what we will do we will not deal with nlp task at hand right now so what we will do we will drop description and also we have a column do we have the column screen name or we dropped it so let's see i think we dropped screen name already right so yes screen name we have already dropped so now let us drop description also so if we want you can take it as an experimentation part and then have the tfidf vectors for description and then have them as a separate set of features combine them with the existing features and then try to train the model but in this video we will not look at that way because of time constraint okay this video is already very long i also want you to show how to train the model also right so let's remove description column straight away okay so what we'll do uh, we'll see we'll say twitter df dot drop description axis is equal to one in place is equal to true right we have dropped description so we still have language and location right so if you look at the data we have this language and location so let's see what we have how many languages and how many locations we have twitter df of lang lang is for language dot n unique so this will give us a unique language so there are 48 unique languages so what we can do so let's check that lang dot value counts so most of the accounts have english language so out of 37000 odd data set that we have 21450 have english espinol 1213 so there is a drastic reduction in the count right so what we'll do for now we'll just uh, drop this column okay and we'll also look at which was the other column the location right so the location also looks to have similar number of unique values let's have a look at it location dot n unique okay so there are 12050 locations and there is no point in checking value counts so we will not be able to look at that right so what we will do we will just drop language and location columns from our data set okay so twitter df dot drop language and location access is equal to one in place is equal to true right so twitter df dot head so this is how the data looks like so we have all the columns which are only numerical okay so what what else we can do so once we 
have dealt with this much we have removed few columns we have we have converted few of the categorical and boolean columns into numerical columns right so we will check if we have any missing data in this particular data set after modifying or doing this much exploratory data analysis okay so i'll say twitter df dot is null dot sum so in this case i do not want to express it in percentage i just want to have the numbers zero every column okay so none of the columns have missing records all the columns have all the values populated okay so now what we can do we we can okay now we can say that most of the eda part we have done most of this part we have done so we have understood the task we have understood the data we have understood the dependency between the target and features we have checked for missing values and appropriately i don't think we have handled in any way the missing values so after some of the comparisons and dropping the columns all the missing values are gone so we do not have any missing values right now so that we do not have to handle the missing values right now right so we have handled categorical features so we haven't yet handled outliers uh, to be frank we haven't even checked whether there are any outliers right so we will look at it in a later step so we haven't scaled the features so i do not want to scale the features right now because i want you guys to show the effect of scaling the features on the algorithms how it affects the model performance okay so we'll look at it later we have checked the correlation between the features and the target variables and accordingly we have chosen the required features we tried to do feature engineering we created a new column called as period early morning morning late night with respect to the created at column but in the end we decided to do away with that particular column because it did not help us in coming to any specific conclusion whether it will help whether deciding the account is bot or human account right so we have done the feature selection now we have to shuffle the data and split the data so this is what we have to do right so what i'll do i will first shuffle the data now okay so i have explained why shuffle is important so what happens so let me just quickly recap that, okay so so let's say in this particular data set so let's say we have some uh, features and account type this is our target variable right so let's say all of uh, out of 37000 odd records that we have uh, let's say first 10000 records if the account type is human and the records after 10000 till the end if the account type is one we will not be able to train the data in a we will not be able to train the model in a correct way because initially all the account type will be zero that is human accounts and our model may get biased towards this particular data model will get biased model will get biased towards this particular account type that is zero okay so in order to avoid this particular mistake or this particular scenario we will what we will do we will shuffle the data set so how we can shuffle the data set we can say twitter df is equal to twitter df i want to sample the data set and i want it to be 100 percent okay so in this case you can give the random uh, this will be completely random right so you can give random state and set it to some number so that the results would be reproducible so in this case let me give the random state and set it to 42 some random number okay so now if i check my twitter df dot head so you'll see the data is shuffled nicely okay so now what we will do uh, since we have shuffled it i do not want the index to be shuffled as well i want to reset the index okay so what i'll do i will just reset the index twitter df dot reset index okay and i want it to be in place is equal to true so now if i check twitter df dot head 
we will see the index okay so this is another problem now the actual in we have a column by name index introduced because we use tree set index so what we will do we will drop that so what we could have done we could have set drop is equal to true here so that this particular column would not have been there at first place now we have this particular column we will drop this okay so we will say twitter df dot drop index access is equal to one in place is equal to true okay now if i check twitter df dot head and check the first three columns okay that column is gone and we have the shuffle data with reset index okay so with this we are good to start building our machine learning models so i'll say let's start building machine learning models okay so for that i need to import some of the libraries and methods okay so what i'll do first i have to split the data right i have i have shuffled and then i have to split the data so for that i'll say train test split so i'll import from sklearn.model selection i'll import train test split so for this what i'll do i will create a method okay so i will say define split data i will take the twitter data frame and i will say x train comma x test y train comma y test is equal to train test split and i want to pass x and y values to this particular method so what i'll say twitter df dot drop so what i have to drop i have to drop this particular account type right so this except account type all are my features that is x values so drop account type so this is a method drop is a method right should not pass it in a list and access will be one i do not want to drop it in place so i will not set in place to true okay so these are my x values so what is this all the columns except account type are my feature values so that is my x so now i have to pass in y values so what is my y value it is twitter df of account type right so this is my y value correct so now that i have specified my x and y value i will need to specify the test size so how much percentage of my data i want it to be kept aside as a test data set so we have around 37000 records right so let's say uh, if we keep let's keep 33% aside as a test data okay so i'll say test size so i'll have it in the next line test size is equal to 0 0.33 so it should be in a fraction so 0.33 represents 33 percent okay so 0.33 i'll say random state is equal to 42 okay just if i say shuffle okay so i'll set shuffle to true again so we have already shuffled it uh, there is no need to shuffle it again okay so random state is equal to 42 and then stratify is equal to twitter df of account type okay so what the stratify does uh, this will have the equal number of percentage split uh, between human and bot accounts so i will talk about talk more about these individual parameters in my another video but for now let's stratify with respect to account type okay so now i will just close this bracket and then i'll say i'll return this x train x test y train and y test from this particular method they return all these things okay so this method is ready now 
now what i'll say i will uh, create okay no i don't have to create another method because i have already shuffled the data right using frac method here so i'll just give it a heading so i'll say let's shuffle the data okay so we have shuffled it uh then what we'll do we will call this particular split method okay so it's simple i will get this i'll say split data i'll pass my twitter df right so now if i check extrain dot head so this this will have only feature values and similarly x test will have all my feature values right and y train and y test will be my target values for train test and test set so y train and y test okay so now i have my data ready okay so what we will do we will try some of the basic models uh, let's say we will try let's try logistic regression decision tree random forest and support vector machine for classification okay and for that we have to import the required library and methods right so let me import logistic regression so for that what i have to do i have to say from sklearn dot linear model import logistic regression right so now i want to try out decision tree and random forest as well right so from sklearn dot tree import decision tree classifier okay and i want to import random forest as well and random forest is part of ensemble sklearn dot ensemble import random forest classifier and also i want to import support vector classifier right so for that i have to import from sklearn dot svm import svc okay so these four things i want to try out okay so what we'll do we'll just fit we'll train these models so first we will initialize logistic regression classifier as logistic regression so logistic regression all base models with all the default parameters no playing with the parameters tuning right now okay so this is basically a uh, you can say okay so this particular step train few ml models with default parameters and check the performance so we are now at second step okay so logistic regression we have initialized it let's initialize all these four models okay so let's initialize support vector machine svc okay and let us initialize decision tree classifier decision tree classifier all default parameters random forest classifier rfc random forest classifier okay so i'll just name them logistic regression model support vector model decision tree model random forest model okay so what we'll do we will train them so in order to train those models all i have to say is lrc dot fit i'll say x train y train that's it right so x train just type it instead of copying it will be quick x train y train 
So now we have trained our logistic regression model. It's pretty quick as you can see. So we can check the performance. So for that we can access the method score. And I want to check the performance on training set first. How well it has done on training. So the accuracy is around 67% on training set. Okay. It's not that great. So as we have fixed earlier, uh, our base model is 66%, right? So that's what we have defined here, right? So where is it? Yes, we if we just predict every account as human account, we would be right 66% of the times. So our base logistic regression model seems to be doing the same thing. So everything it is predicting as human account. So it is correct 67% of the time. So it is not great. So without even using logistic regression, we can blindly achieve this particular accuracy. So this is not a good model. Okay. So now let us see how let us train our support vector machine, right? So okay, before that, let's check the performance on test set. So even on that, it should be giving us a similar accuracy. So let's see. Okay, so it's the same thing, right? So it is blindly predicting every account as human account. So it's of no use, it's no good. Right. So now let us try to train our SVM model. So SVM dot fit x train comma y train. Okay. So this may take a while, a minute or two. So I'll just execute it. I'll pause the recording and then I'll be back once it is completed. Okay. So yes, it took less than a minute actually to train. It did not take that long. Okay. So our SVM model is trained. Let's see how it is performing on train data first. So again, SVM dot score. It's the same thing. X train, Y train. So if I check the score, let me also check the score on test set as well. So X test, Y test. Okay, so let's see how it is performing. Okay, so the performance is similar to what we have seen with respect to logistic regression. So support vector machine is also not doing that great. So seems that it is also blindly predicting every account, whatever it gets as human account. Okay. So let's see how it is performing on test set. So I do not expect its performance to be more different than what we are seeing for logistic regression. So it should be around 66, 67% only on test set as well. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so the performance is similar, right? So there is these two models are of no use. So the SVM and base logistic regression models are of no use. So let us see how decision tree does on it. So decision tree classifier dot fit. I'll train it first. X train Y train. So this has done training. DTC dot score. Let's check how it is performing on train data set so i'm expecting it to be doing well better than logistic regression and support vector machine models okay so let's see yeah so i think it is overfitting guys so let's see its performance on test data okay so let's not be happy with the train score yeah you see it is actually overfitting so decision tree on training it is giving 100% accuracy but on test set, it is giving 83% accuracy. But this is actually better than our base model. And we can safely say that decision tree classifier is doing a good job when we compare it to the performance of logistic regression and support vector machine model. Okay. So now we have trained decision tree. Let us also train our base model for RFC, random forest classifier. Okay. So RFC dot fit X train y train okay so this will take a little time compared to the decision tree because it is training multiple decision trees right so that's why it takes more time so if i check the score yeah so it's also almost 100 percent but let us check how it is performing on test data set rf3 dot score on test data set x test and y test right so if I execute it, it's 
okay so we can say that even random forest is overfitting on the training data but its performance is better than decision tree classifier because on test data set the accuracy for decision tree classifier is 83 percent on test data set the performance of random forest classifier is 88 percent accurate right so this is good in a way right so now let us i want to show you the effect of scaling the feature values on the ml algorithms okay so let's say let's scale the feature values so why we want to scale the feature values if you check x train dot head and x test dot head you can see the feature values are varying very largely right so some of the columns has the values only 0 and 1 some of the columns have the values fractional values as well 0 to all the way up to 47 or even 100 or 1000 tweets per day right and some of the values you see here it's around 659000 minimum is 9 what we can see here so this will have a bad impact on the machine learning algorithms right so let's define a function to scale these values so why i want to define a function because as i told you scaling can be done in two ways right so it can be either min max scalar or standard scalar right so let us try min max scalar first and then as part of experimentation you guys can try standard scalar okay so let me just define the function very quickly define scale features what i'll do i'll just copy this method i have it here so i'll copy this okay so it takes train data set test data set and then scale type which scale type we want to use right so whether it is min max scalar or standard scalar and it is returning the scaled data set okay so what i'll say i will say train df comma test df is equal to scale features i'll call that method i'll pass x train and x test and the scaling method would be min max okay so okay so what is it min max scalar is not defined okay so i have to import min max scalar from sklearn library okay so for that what i'll do i will say from sklearn.preprocessing let me import both standard scalar and min max scalar okay so i'll import this now i'll execute it i'll have the scaled data with me after executing this okay so now if you check train df dot head so all the feature values are scaled and test df dot head all the features value will be scaled okay so now we will train our same base models once again we will see the effect of scaling okay so what i'll say i will initialize the model again so i will initialize everything because these are already trained models right so i will initialize it again then i will train them lrc dot fit instead of x train i will use train div because this is my scaled this has my scaled feature values right so train df comma y train so we do not have to train the target value because it's either 0 or 1 okay so in none of the cases we will scale the target values just remember that so i'll just say fit so logistic regression is trained now and now if i say lrc dot score let's check the performance on training data okay so if i execute it okay so you see the performance has improved a bit so earlier logistic regression was giving around 67 percent accuracy before scaling now after scaling the feature values it has increased by almost i can say six seven percent right so the accuracy is 73 74 percent from 66 67 percent 
so this is the effect of scaling on any ml algorithms this the scaling or normalization helps in faster conversions and better learning of all the machine learning models especially in neural networks the scaling helps a lot okay so just remember this point so similarly we will check the score on test data set so it will be test df and y test so if i check it okay you see you see you you get the point right what i'm trying to explain it so this is how the scaling affects so we'll see if there is any impact on support vector machine as well so what i'll do i'll just quickly train svm as, as well here okay so train df y train so this should not take more time again because we have already scaled the features but that doesn't seem to have any effect on svm right it takes a little longer when compared to plain logistic regression model so i'll come back when this training is complete okay okay so the training is complete now we will check the performance right so i'll say svm dot score train df comma white and i want to check the performance on training set first. and similarly i want to check the performance on test set as well so let me just copy and be ready with that particular line of code as okay. so this is it so i do not let's see uh it should be somewhere near to the logistic regression model performance guys so i am not expecting it to do great okay uh, let's see how it performs okay so it's similar so 73.44 percent accurate right so similarly on test set it should not vary much it should be somewhere near to 73 74 percent only so I do not expect it to do much better on test set either. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so the performance is similar. It's around seventy four point three percent accurate. Okay, so so this is the effect on logistic regression and support vector machine. Uh, if you remember the decision trees, how it works. Uh, if you have understood in depth how decision tree works, the scaling of the features will not have any effect on the model performance. Okay. So, if you want to check it, you can check that. So, let me quickly show you guys how whether there is any effect on the performance. Okay. So, decision tree. If I want to check the performance. So, earlier the decision tree was actually overfitting. So, accuracy was 100%. Now, also, I do not expect it to reduce, and there is no scope of any improvement further on training set, right? So we'll see how it is performing on test set if there is any improvement on the test set. So I do not see any improvement. I do not expect any. Okay. As I told you, the feature scaling has no effect on decision tree or random forest algorithm as, as well. So if you want to check, you can check for random forest classifier as well. Okay. So I'll say RFC dot fit. I'll pass in my train and train data set and i want to check the performance so earlier also it was almost 100 percent so there is no scope of improvement no room for improvement further right so if at all there is any scope of improvement it's on test data set but as i told you the scaling doesn't have any effect on random forest or decision trees or any tree classification or regression tasks okay so it remains the same there is no change so we can safely say that logistic regression and svm so an improvement of around six to seven percent in its performance after scaling the features but scaling the features has no impact on decision tree classifier and random forest classifier okay so this is how scaling impacts on some of the machine learning models but decision tree and random forest doesn't have any impact on it okay now now what we will do uh, 
we will actually come to the third step okay so in this number of steps what we'll do we will fit the base models using k fold cross validations with k splits we can use two splits three splits four splits five splits ten splits as per your wish and then we'll choose a top two th two to three models and then fine tune them further we call it as hyperparameter tuning okay so what we'll do uh, we will train the same models and, or we will choose one or two extra okay so i'll say running k fold cross validation so usually we should be using nested cross fold validation that will give us better results but due to time constraint and com computation constraint we will just make use of k fold cross validation for now okay so for making use of k fold cross validation i need to import a library right from sk learn import model selection okay so let me quickly copy the code that i have written earlier okay so don't get overwhelmed by this i'll explain it to you okay so what it does so what it does i am here i am asking it to split the data set into two folds uh, just for the faster execution i am asking it to fit for two folds you can have it for five folds or 10 folds okay so let me do it for three folds okay uh, for the sake of understanding i'll set the random state to some decent number so 42 okay so what what i am doing here so for each fold i am training different models so what all models i am training i am training logistic regression model i am training k nearest neighbors model i am also training random forest classifier i am training support vector machine and also i am training gradient boost model for classification tasks okay so for each of the folds i will train the model i will save the results and also i will store the particular model in the list okay so why i am doing this because for each of the folds i for each of the algorithm i want to select the best performing model out of the three folds or five folds whatever i am doing right now okay so that i can select that model and further use it to fine tune the hyperparameters okay so for that sake what i am doing i am initially uh, this is logistic regression okay this is not linear regression okay k fold for logistic regression so what i am doing i am initializing the k fold object model selection dot k fold number of splits i am setting it at 3 i am shuffling the data and random state i am setting it at 42 okay now what i will do i will initialize the models and then train them for all these three splits okay so i will cover about k fold validation in a separate video how this particular thing works but think that it will have the entire data will be split into three parts and one part will be used for validation and other two parts will be used for training purpose and it will happen for all the three splits okay and for all the three splits we will store the model in a list and also we will store the results for the each split so these lists are to store the results of the model and this list is to store the actual model okay so what i'll do i'll create two lists and for train indices val indices in this particular split okay so i will train the model using the fit method okay and then i will append the results train results into this particular model okay and then i will also append the trained model to this particular list for each fold i am initializing the model okay just try to understand it and listen to it carefully you will not get confused okay so this looks complex but it's actually easy i will cover a separate video where i will explain what is k fold validation and what this method actually does okay for now just take my word and take this particular set of code okay so similarly what i do after i train the logistic regression model for all the three splits i will compute the mean accuracy of the all the three logistic regression models and i'll just display them right so i'll follow the same step for 
के नियरेस्ट नेबर्स क्लासिफिकेशन ओके आई विल फॉलो द सेम स्टेप फॉर सपोर्ट वेक्टर क्लासिफिकेशन आई विल फॉलो द सेम स्टेप फॉर रैंडम फॉरेस्ट क्लासिफिकेशन एंड आल्सो फॉर ग्रेडियंट बूस्ट क्लासिफिकेशन ओके सो वंस आई ट्रेन ऑल दिस मॉडल्स व्हाट आई विल डू आई विल सेलेक्ट द बेस्ट परफॉर्मिंग मॉडल आउट ऑफ ऑल द थ्री स्प्लिट्स एंड देन रिटर्न देम आई एम सेलेक्टिंग टॉप वन परफॉर्मिंग मॉडल द टॉप मॉडल सो हाउ आई एम डूइंग दैट आई एम टेकिंग द आर्क मैक्स ऑफ द रिजल्ट्स दैट विल गिव मी द इंडेक्स ऑफ द हाईएस्ट एक्यूरेट एक्यूरेसी स्कोर एंड आई विल यूज दैट इंडेक्स टू गेट द रिस्पेक्टिव मॉडल व्हिच हैज रिटर्न मी दैट पर्टिकुलर एक्यूरेसी ओके so this is how i am i have designed my k fold validation method okay so if you look at this i am appending the results of train data and right based on train data and uh, train x and train y right so if i just scroll it to the right side you will see the actual code here so you can see i am scoring each of the model okay train data dot drop account type because except train data except account type column all are my features x and then i am taking the y value and i am taking this from validation indices not on training indices i want i want my model to be doing well on my validation set not on training set anyway i know that it may it will do better on training set compared to validation and test set but i want the model that is performing best on validation set so i am using validation indices here okay so this is the setup for k fold validation and finding out the top model okay so now i have defined this what i will do i will call this particular method so okay so if i execute it which is train data is not defined so why it is not defined uh what is this train data so let's see so just give me a second okay it's train df right so i have to okay so what i'll do just give me a second guys okay i'll fix this train data error okay guys so there was some error uh, earlier uh, i had to change the definition here x train and y train uh, earlier it was train data so there was some mistake within the column and the logic that i have employed here so i provided features and label separately in this particular method okay so rest all logic remains same so now i am getting a different error so we'll see what is that and we'll try to solve it so it says K N N C K neighbors classifier. K neighbors classifier is not defined. So I think I haven't imported the required models yet. So let me just import them and then try to train the models. Okay. So what I'll do? What I'll do? I will just import them. So I'll import K nearest neighbor classifier, gradient boost classifier, both. Right. So I have logistic regression. I have support vector i have random forest okay this should do the job now i'll execute it it should not give me that particular error at least so let's see so if you see the outputs here running k fold validations using simple logistic regression model so this is for first fold second fold third fold we are using three fold cross validations right and similarly uh, running k fold validations for k n n classification model this is the accuracy for first fold the second fold and the third fold and after everything for after all the three folds you are seeing the mean accuracy what is this mean accuracy it is the average accuracy of these three models first fold second fold third fold model so there is a typo here instead of its logistic regression it should be log yes its logistic regression it's correct so mean accuracy score for kn and classification that's correct mean accuracy score for support vector classification that is also correct random forest classification and gradient boost okay so we are good now what we have done we have trained 
one, two, three, four, five, five different models on threefold cross validations. Okay, and then we have evaluated each of the fold fold validated models, and then we have returned the best model. So, which is the best logistic regression model out of these three? It is point seven four two three. Right, so we would have returned this particular model for KNN classification. We would have returned seventy eight point eight nine, the last third fold model. For support vector classification, we would have returned the second fold model because it has given the accuracy of seventy three point five one. Similarly, for random forest classification, we would have returned the best model that is eighty seven point nine zero eight percent accuracy. Okay, and finally for the gradient boost model, the Good accuracy score is, or the best accuracy accuracy score out of all the three folds is eighty five point six two three percent. Okay, so now that we have uh, returned these best models, what we have to do? We have to do the hyperparameter tuning. So what we'll do? Out of these three things, I will select only one best performing model, that is random forest. Right. So I'll just write it down. i will select the best performing model out of above five that is random forest classifier okay so i would have this returned in a variable called as best rfm okay so this best rfm is a trained random forest classifier model and this is giving me a accuracy of 87.9 One percent, right? With accuracy of eighty-seven point nine zero percent. So, what is this? This is just a base model on threefold cross validation. So, where we are, we are still at this particular step. Train few ML, uh, fit the base model using k-fold cross validation with k splits. We have chosen three splits. Now we are. we will be doing hyperparameter tuning on this particular model that is random forest model okay so in order to do that we will define a function called as parameter tuning random forest model for random forest model so i have the method ready here so i'll call it as parameter tuning random forest model i'll get the best random forest model from the previous step that is k fold step and then i will get the train data so again this train data would be x train and y train i have to change this right so it will be x train and y train so sorry for that i will reset it okay so instead of train data it will be x train and y train so here i will set the parameters which different parameters and which different sets i want to try so this is the number of estimators uh, internally how many number of decision trees i want to try out so for the sake of uh, time purpose i am just giving two values 100 200 you can try multiple values 300 500 1000 2000 trees okay you can extend this list to any values of your choice based on the time that you have okay uh just to demo you guys i am selecting only two values okay so the max features either auto or square root of the number of features that we have max depth also i have chosen 4 comma 6 to try out different values you can start with 2 4 6 8 10 12 or any number of max depth values you can try out okay so similarly minimum samples to split i have chosen 2 comma 3 you can choose different values you can go all the way till you have only one sample in the leaf and or you can go with 2 3 4 5 6 many as many numbers as you want to try out okay so the warm start is set to true or false it's again something which i will talk about in my another video when i'm talking about random forest okay and random state we can try multiple random states 43 50 so let me also try 42 as well okay so here i have defined my parameters to search for so these are all the hyper parameters i want to tune so what i am trying to achieve here is i am trying to find out the best possible values for each of these parameters so that my random forest model will 
perform well on this particular classification task okay so i am making use of grid search cv and in grid search i will pass these parameters rf parameters the model which i want to train okay and then the cross fold validations that i want to use so five cross validations i want to use in this particular method and verbose is just a thing which you you can set to one or two anything higher than one it will give you the detailed output okay so return training scores yes true i want to return the training scores for each of the parameters that we try out here okay then i'll say i will fit i will train the models i will train it on the grid entire grid i want i will call it as a grid i will train it as on entire grid so we will have multiple models maybe 100 300 500 models to train okay so we will see how many models we will get so here instead of train data dot drop i will use x train and y train so my features and my target values okay and then i will return my rf grid so i will do this i am afraid i haven't imported grid search cv so let me just import that as well okay so let me just uh, quickly write the code for that so for grid search cv it's again from model selection so grid search cv so i will also for the purpose of uh, let's see we will do that later classification report and everything will do that later so for now we will just import grid search cv i'll execute it and then i will call this parameter tuning on random forest model okay so just give me a second i'll i have the code ready i'll just copy that okay so rf grid parameter tuning and it will be x train y train so hopefully i haven't messed the code okay so there are totally 480 fits five folds for 96 candidates so if you multiply five folds with 96 you will get 480 random forest models okay out of this you need to you will get some model with the best performance and you will also get the best parameters out of all this so it's actually a cross product 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 so these many things will be tried out with different combination 100 auto 4 2 true 43 100 auto 4 2 true 50 100 auto 4 2 true 42 so this is one set so similarly it will be for 100 square root 4 2 true 43 so all the possible combinations would be tried and all those models will be trained okay so this will be the part where we will be where we have talked about hyperparameter tuning okay so we will not have much work here while it is doing the hyperparameter tuning most of the time will be spent in eda and understanding the data and preparing the data okay so you have seen it already Mo more than one hour we have spent in understanding the data preparing the data uh, removing the features playing big boss and keeping the features we also try to do feature engineering but that that did not give us the required uh, output or the required conclusion so we just drop those features as well so most of the time will go here more than 50 60 percent of the time then just uh, training the model uh, exploring the results it's just importing the library and calling the specific methods that's it okay so we will see uh, we will come back once it has done with the searching of all these 480 fits okay so we'll come back after a while okay so it took around three minutes to complete uh, these total 480 fits okay so now let us see the best parameters okay so how you can check the best parameters so it's rf grid dot best params so these these seems to be the best parameters the max depth happens to be six 
minimum sample splits happen to be 2, number of estimators happens to be 100, random state is 50, warm start is true, max features is auto. So, these are the set of uh, parameter values that we have to use in order to achieve the best results on this random forest model. Okay. So, we can also check the best score out of this all 480 fits. So, how do, how do we check that? It's rf underscore grid dot best score. So, it says 84.44%. This is on the train data. Okay. So, this is the best score that we have achieved. Right. So, now we have got the best parameters. We will use these parameters to train the model, random forest model, and then evaluate it on the test data set. Okay. So, let us do that. So, in order to use, uh, let, let me call it as tuned random forest classifier is equal to random forest classifier and I will pass these, these parameters here. Okay. So, I will say max depth is equal to 6. Okay. And then max features is equal to auto. Then the third parameter is min sample split, it is 2. Okay, and similarly, I will specify the remaining parameters. Number of estimators is equal to 100, and then random state is equal to 50, warm start is equal to true. So, these are my best parameters which have provided me the best score, right, while doing grid search on the hyperparameters. Okay. So, let me initialize this model. Now, I will train this model. Okay. So, tuned RFC dot fit. So, what I will fit? I will fit on X train and Y train. So, once it is done training, I will also be able to check the score on the training data set. So, instead of fit, I will have to call score. So, you see 84.92% accuracy on the train data set. Okay. So, if we check the performance on test data set, it will be x test comma y test. So, it is 84.62. So, you can see that the model is not overfitting, the model is not underfitting. So, the model performance is just right. So, we actually want this kind of comparable results wherein the performance on test set and train set are similar. Okay. So, if suppose, let us say, if the score on train data set is around 95-96% and on the test data set it is around 84-85%. We say that the model is overfitting. We say that there is a variance in the model, right. It is trying to fit, it is trying very hard to fit on the training data set, but it is not doing so well in the, on the test data set. But this is not the case in this way. In this case, that is not the case, right. So, uh, both the accuracies on train and test data set, they are comparable. So, this is how we actually need the model performance to be. Okay. So, with this, uh, I want to also show you the classification report and the confusion metrics. Okay. So, for that, let me import the required libraries, confusion metrics and classification report. I also want to have the predictions, predictions on test data and predictions on train data. So, test predictions. So, it will be x test. x test. So, I will have my test predictions, predictions on the test set, and I have my actuals on the test as y test, correct? So, I will also have the predictions on train data set. Predictions is equal to tuned RFC dot predict x train. Right. So, that I can give you the confusion matrix. Right. So, for that what I will say, I will say print confusion matrix. So, it is y train 
and train predictions so you see uh, it is actually not doing that great on the bots right it is doing good on humans but we cannot say it's not doing good but it's doing a fair job in classifying the bots account type okay so similarly we can check the confusion metrics for our test data y test and test predictions right so this will also look something similar right so just by looking at these numbers you will not get to know the accuracy for each class separately so for that you need to have a look at classification report so for that i'll say print classification report i'll say uh, let me first look at training data classification report okay so it's uh, y train and train predictions so this is the classification report so you can see the average accuracy is 84 around 84 percent and you can see the precision and recall values for human and bot accounts so the precision looks good around 87 percent and 80 percent for human and bot accounts respectively recall is okay not bad for human accounts it's 91 percent but for bot accounts it could be better so it's just 72 percent right but the f1 score it's looking good uh, it's not bad so our baseline had 66 percent accuracy and this is giving us around 83 percent accuracy so it's not a bad model okay so in conclusion we can say that random forest model is giving us the better accuracy around 84.62 percent on the test data set so there is further scope for improvement in this right so we we uh, what we can do uh, we can we have done away with the description column right so we can make use of the description column and use tfidf vectors okay in order to in order to see if there is any improvement in the performance of the model or we haven't even touched on the outlier detection and outlier removal so there it may be a case that there are some outliers which is dragging the performance of the model down right so if we remove those outliers we may able to see the improvement we may not we do not know right now right and since the data is imbalanced we can also try out majority un under sampling or minority over sampling techniques so such as moat right so we can try to use that because of time constraint i have not used that but i will what i'll do i will release another video where i will be identifying and removing the outliers okay and then trying to train the model trying to find the best model and then check the classification report separately okay i will also try to use smoot technique in order to balance the data set and try out the training and how it how, what effect it has on the model performance okay so hope you guys have enjoyed this implementation so this is the general idea or general steps you can employ in order to implement any machine learning or data science projects okay so once you have this model ready what you can do you can save this model onto your disk so that you can use it for deployment further so i will show you how to save the model onto disk so it's simple you can say import pickle pickle is a module which you have to install it so what you can say pickle dot dump tuned rfc open you just need to give the model name so you can say tuned rfc model okay and write binary so with this you will have the model stored in the location where you have this notebook opened and working on okay so that's it for this video guys if you have liked this content like this implementation please give it a thumbs up remember you can use this as a mini project okay so mini project on twitter bot classification okay so you can make use this you can use this as a mini project or hobby project in your academics and then showcase it to your teachers or even you can have this in your resume detailing the steps employed okay 
so it's better if you share the learning among your peers or okay so it will help you to remember the stuff that you have done and you have learned okay so if you like the content please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye